Hello, and welcome to another Hyperdrive Pictures video effects tutorial in honor of our YouTube channel reaching 100 subscribers, 100 Facebook likes, and over 10,000 video views all within the same week. We decided to open it up to you guys and see what kind of visual effects you would like us to cover in our next visual effects tutorial, which you are watching right now. And the one that we got was to show you how to do the moving text in the title for Portlandia, where the text moves around with the footage and it also gets obscured behind trees, and in our case, we're going to obscure it behind some cars. But it's actually a very simple effect. And since I do think it's such a simple effect, I'm going to show you how to use the, the tool behind that effect, the tools and techniques, to apply to another effect that I use all the time, especially in the last video that we did last week, which was our Harry Potter video. So we're going to get started here. We've got some footage, and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make a null object. So you can just do that. Go to Layer, New, Null Object. Then you're going to want to click on your regular footage, Nothing special has happened yet. You're going to go to Tracker Controls, Track Motion. Then you're going to Track Point. After Effects is going to use this track point as a reference to look at an object within the frame and then see where it's moved and then apply that data to the null object, within, which then you can use for everything else. So we're going to move it up to this lamp post here where it's got these two little prongs and we're going to expand it like that. And the bigger this is, the longer it'll take to process, but since I know for a fact that it'll jump between these two prongs, we're just going to have to include both of them, and it'll be a little bit more accurate too. So we're going to go ahead and click Apply. Now, what I like to do is every couple of seconds hit Stop and then Start again, because what inevitably happens is that your track bugs out at some point and you need to go back in and correct it and if you've only hit the play button once when you go back and correct it you're gonna have to go over all that tracking data if you hit play and stop all the time you're just gonna have to go over the last couple of seconds of tracking data so it'll potentially save you headaches in the future and it's uh, a little rare to find a perfect track uh, so just go ahead and use that technique and you'll save yourself a lot of time in the in the future I don't want to jinx it, but I think I just might have had the perfect track right here, but we've got a little less than half of the footage left, so let's see what happens. So you can see wherever that lamp post is moving, so is our track point. And this is where we're going to figure out the motion of our clip. It's getting a little out of frame there, so I'm going to hit H, move it over, hit V, start tracking again. about one second of footage to track left. Now each of these little squares is a frame that is referenced and looked at. And we are about to come on our last one. Couple more frames, three, two, one, go. And we went a little bit beyond the composition, but that's okay. Okay, I've already gone and made the text for the title to save time. It's this composition here. It's got a texture to give some depth to the composition and a turbulent displace to give it a little bit of wobbliness like the text in the show. But text is so simple, I, I figured why I bother going over it. So let's go over to where this truck is. We're going to put the text right in front of the truck. So this is where our text is going to be. And to make sure it stays tracked in with all of our frames motion, we're just going to take this swirling tool under the word parents, we're going to pick whip it to the null. So now, and I'm going to go to half res so you can see this, as our frame moves, so does our uh, title. So check this out, it just stays planted firmly in there. It's a really cool effect. Now the next thing we're going to do is how to obscure it behind this truck. So we're going to go to the point right before the truck gets in front of it. You know what, let's move this over here, just so we can see the entire truck. We're going to make a new solid. We're going to call it truck mat. We're going to turn the visibility off. Then we're going to, just with our mask tool, draw a quick shape around the truck. So we're going to have a nice black solid, the exact shape of our truck.
Boom. Looks good. Yes, yes. We're going to hit MM, feather at three pixels. We're going to hit Shift P. Whoops. We're going to go out of that, then hit Shift P. So we're going to keyframe the mask path and the position, and we're also going to turn this off. And we'll also Alt, uh, alt Begin Bracket. So before we go into our keyframes, you have to remember that this truck is moving on its own to the from the right to the left, but it's also moving within this frame, which is moving. So we're going to parent this to the null object as well to account for the frame's motion, the camera's motion. Then we're going to go in and account for the truck's motion. So let's go forward 10 frames. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That truck is right smack dab in front of our text, and we're going to move the entire layer over. And then because of the angle of the truck changing, we're going to change this mask a bit to stay in line with the truck's shape. There we go. Looks good. Another 10 frames. And that truck is out of there. And we'll, even though it's out of there, it'll just help all of our data. We'll adjust the mask points as well. And we'll alt end bracket. And we're going to basically use this as a reference point to tell After Effects where to obscure the text. So right here we have it smack dab in front of the text. If I turned it on, you'd see it was covering the text. And we're going to hit the text, go to track mat, and pick alpha inverted, which is basically telling After Effects everywhere that this black solid is not is where you can see the text. But if there's a black solid there, even if visibility is off, get rid of the text. I click that, boom, our text is gone, everything's tracked in, and that's how you do the effect. It's super simple. All right, so I'm going to show you a little bit more stuff because I think this is a very simple effect, and I don't want that to be the only thing that I taught you guys in this week's video, so we're going to go over here. This is some footage from our Harry Potter video last week. We're releasing another one next week. I'm going to show you how to use motion tracking and nulls whoops, with lens flares, specifically with Video Copilot's optical lens flares. So we're going to make a solid, call it lens flare, and we're going to apply optical flares. Really cool plugin. If you haven't used it already, I definitely recommend you go to videocopilot.net and download it for yourself. All right, let's use this red light. Looks pretty cool. Now, if you don't know much about motion tracking and null objects or the way optical flares works with that data, you might think, okay, first I'm going to set it to screen, so that way I can see everything underneath it. And I just parent it to the null, and it's going to be parented to this point on the wand where you can see our null object, the square. Well, that's not really what happens or how it works. What you've done is parented the entire layer, not the bright center of the flare. So let's go back to the beginning. That's not the way you do it. I'm going to hit none, just to erase that data. Uh, you could you know, move this and then keyframe it, but that would take you forever. But let's hit U on Null 1 and then Alt-click Position X, Y in the flare. We're going to pick whip it just like we did before, but a different part of the effect. We're going to pick whip to the position. So basically, the numbers on the null are going to be the same as the numbers on the position. And since the null is right on the wand, that's where our flare is going to be. And we've got a flare right on the tip of the wand. And if we wanted to, we could add some sparks coming out, and we'd have a really cool spell. But maybe she's just using the Lumos spell in the middle of the day for some reason. I don't know, I'm not a wizard. But let's take this one step further. Let's say you wanted to have a lens flare for some reason uh, on this tree. I don't know why, maybe it's a magic tree. Maybe she's casting a spell on this tree. This was filmed in Austin, this was filmed in California, but maybe she's casting a spell on this part of the tree. So let's go add in our lens flare, and you're going to quickly see there's a problem that happens. 
optical flares. And uh, let's pick another one. I was looking at another flare earlier today, thinking I haven't used that yet. And that flare was Pink Glow. So the screen. Now if we do all those same things we just did, you're going to notice that the only place we can ever move the flare is, or have the flares at the top of this light post. We can't really move it off to the right. It won't let us. It'll just keep snapping back to this light post because that's the expression doing its work. This expression supersedes, in this case, uh, you trying to move it over. Now, if this was nighttime and we wanted to make it look like there's a light coming out of the la lamp post, you know, mission accomplished, we've done that. But, you know, playing devil's advocate, we want this flare to be on this tree. Doesn't really make sense why. Well, here's what you can do. Go create a new light. Doesn't really matter what it says there. We're just going to have it turned down here. We're going to hit the Z position to zero, so that way we don't have to worry about any depth. We're just making it move in the X and Y coordinates. We're going to move it to the point on the tree. Then we're going to parent the null or the light to the null. So we're kind of going around about ways of using the null data to apply to the lens flare. So we're going to have the lens flare turned back on. And just so you can see that it's way over here, we're going to go to our positioning type and then make it track the light. Since there's only one light, it's just going to track that one light. So the light is tracked to the null and the lens flare is tracked to the light. So it's a roundabout ways of making the lens flare track to the null. And you can see as we move around, it stays tracked onto that point and even outside of the frame. Nice. So it's a very realistic flare there. It goes outside of the frame, but everything stays relative. Now that's it. I We will see you guys next week on Wednesday. Subscribe if you haven't. We do spoofs of video games and movies like Harry Potter. Every Wednesday, we've got some fun stuff lined up for the month of May coming up. And if you have a suggestion or want to say anything about how you like this video, well, A, hit the like button, and B, leave a comment below. I check all of them, and I try to get back to every single one of you, especially the ones who have questions about these tutorials. I always love helping you guys tweak these for your own specific uses. So that's everything. I will see you guys on Wednesday. Bye.